What's the best sports car you can buy for $100,000? This is a price point I've really been looking forward to because there's so many amazing options. If you're looking for your first supercar or something that you can really put some miles on, the Lamborghini Gallardo or the Audi R8 are both tremendous options. You could get an 09 to 2013 or 14 Gallardo LP550 or LP560, both tremendous cars, great to drive. They're probably going to be e-gear at that price point, but you can get one right around 100 grand. You could also go with an earlier manual Gallardo, like the one I have that I used in Car Trek, with a clean, non-flooded history. That's also going to be about 100 grand, maybe a little bit less, and plenty rare. The V10 R8s with a stick or R-Tronic can also be a ton of fun. So those are great options if you want something that you can just immediately drive and not have to worry that much about. If you want something a little bit more rare with a little bit more investment upside, the Porsche 996 GT2 is awesome. Less than 400 US cars, great to drive. One of the first mind-blowing performance cars that I ever drove. Some people don't like the design, I love it. I think they're very special cars. Obviously, the GT2 has remained a very important part of Porsche's 911 model lineup and I think they've got plenty of room to go up and plenty of miles that they can rack up. The other one I love is a Ferrari 550 Maranello. Nicolas Cage drove one in Family Man, Will Smith drove one in Bad Boys 2. Gorgeous design, one of my favorite Ferrari designs. A lovely V12, front engine, gated shifter, all of them. Tremendous car at 100 grand. So those were my ideas, but I asked my friends for their ideas, and this is what they said. For $100,000, I'd buy a pretty unique car. A Muntz Jet. Now these are pretty rare. There's only about 40 of them left in the world, but even at that, the parts are readily available. It's Ford running gear, Ford drivetrain. They're really unique. They're a lot of fun to drive. The top comes off. They're welcome at just about any event you want to take them to, and not you're not going to see yourself coming and going all the time. For $100,000, I have three choices depending on what itch you need to scratch. So if you just want to go out and buy a super cool car to daily drive, I'd go out and get a McLaren MP4-12C. They're ripping fast, you can actually do a lot of maintenance yourself, and I think it'd be an awesome daily. Next one is if you want to build it, I think I'd call up Fran up at RCR Replicas and either, either get the Porsche 917 or like a Lola T70. For $100,000, you can certainly afford all the bits and the coolest whiz bangy stuff you need to build an epic race car for the street. Now lastly is my personal favorite because I don't like race cars unless they're dangerous. Not dangerous for being crap, but like right on the edge of sanity. And the best car you can get is a Formula 5000. American pushrod V8 in the back, just like Formula One in the 1960s or early 70s with rudimentary aerodynamics. <laughs> and it makes this, a Can-Am car look safe. Testicles! <laughs> I don't care what the price point is, if it's one car for everything, the answer is almost always a BMW M5. If it's a hundred grand and change burning a hole in your pocket, then it's this one, the F90, the current car with switchable all wheel drive so you can do silly stuff like this. But my favorite car for under 100, especially having bought so many of them on and off, is actually right here in front of me. It is this Aston Martin Vanquish. You can buy a used one for just under $100,000 and it is a $300,000 car that you're buying basically 30 cents on the dollar. Quite one of the best cars you can own for that money. All right, so for my pick for a $100,000 car, I'm gonna have to go with number one. This Brabus G-Wagon right here, G63, nice and low miles. Phenomenal choice, that exhaust can't be beat. Second option, I'm gonna go over here with this Ferrari F430. Right at a hundred find many ones. This one happens to be my favorite. Black on black, it's got the right options. Exactly what I wanna see. But ultimately, I think, what goes to my heart is gonna be this right here. It's gonna be a 2008. Say, Eric, why are you wearing that dashing Junior Johnson signed helmet by Midnight Moon himself? Great question, and thank you for noticing. 
It's to remind me of the $100,000 cars that I've picked for this week's challenge. I've decided I'm going to pick one from America, one from Europe, and one Japanese car. The Japanese car, which gets third place in my opinion, is the Nissan GTR. Fantastic car, wonderful to drive, it's like driving a video game, however, you can never quite get past the fact that it's a Nissan, it's on the Nissan on the inside, and everything's just plastic, and you'll never get over that fact. Second place is the ZR1 2019 Corvette. Fantastic to drive, tons of power, looks amazing, goes like hell, however, again, interior kind of lets us down. But, if you were going to use $100,000 and get it all done in one shot and you wanted a performance car, I think you should go with the 911 GT3. Not only is it great on the interior, but it goes very fast, has wonderful paddle shift, and uh, handles like nobody's business. I'm going to go back to my interesting collection of things now. What would I buy for $100,000? Let's let Randy Pope's tell us. Oh, I love this car. I don't know if I've ever driven a better handling car. I, I love it that much. It's just so hooked up. The AMG GT, GTS, GTR. Actually, my favorite is the GTS. It looks like a 300 SL Mercedes from the 50s in the Carrera Panamericana. It's gorgeous inside and outside. Torquey AMG V8. Got to buy it used. Two years old, $100,000 all day. I don't know if this fits into the category of cars, but for under 100 grand, you can pick up a used Prevo tour bus. This is a 1990 and it still runs like new because the thing is made out of stainless steel. If you go to car shows a lot like I do, I use this to tow my car to the show. You can hang out in this thing, throw a party, you can live in it. Uh, and quite frankly, these things are just really cool. It's got to be this 1963 Corvette split window. It was a one year only car. This one has been hot rod and that's what I like. I like hot rods. Pro touring, hot little small block, all the cool chassis stuff. Big wheels, sits low, got the side pipes to boot. Hard to beat an old school vet. Since I had kids, my interests have been along the lines of fun cars that technically have back seats. They're small, they don't need a lot of back seat, but they need some. So the obvious answers there are 911s. There's a lot of 991s for under 100 grand. Even turbos, I think, are in that range. Um, but I think there's a more fun option. It's lighter, it's more raw, it's best in a manual transmission, um, hydraulic steering, really a, a driver's car. And uh, of course, the car I'm talking about here is the Lotus Evora. Uh, specifically, I think you get a 2020 Evora GT for that price range. Or um, if you can find one, there's Evora 400s out there with all the add lightness bits, the carbon everywhere, titanium exhaust, that kind of thing. You could get one in that range too. And I think that'd be my choice. Hey guys and gals, Gearhead Girl here. What would I be buying for $100,000? An R32 GTR. Not just any R32 GTR. It'd be getting the Nismo or the N1 edition. Well, it ain't the G-Wagon behind me. That is my wife's vehicle. I'm going to go with the super easy. I'm not taking it easy out here, guys. I'm going to go with what's behind me in my garage. That's right. The brand new 2020 C8 Corvette. I love this car. You can't beat it for the money. I'm sure if I put my mind to it, I could pick something else like a, a true exotic that's 20 bazillion years old with a bunch of miles on it that arguably to some enthusiasts would be a cooler car. But right now, I'm gonna go with the C8 Corvette. Well, you should buy a very broken Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster, of course, especially if someone shrewdly negotiates you into one. Yeah. My three cars, 02 Ferrari 575 and Marinello. My second choice would be a 2014 McLaren 12C Spider. And my third choice would be a 2014 Audi R8 V10 Spider. First of all, cheers to all the men and women of law enforcement during National Police Week. Now for $100,000, there's really only two cars I would buy. One, an obvious choice, Porsche 997 GT3. Can't get an RS anymore for under 100K. But my unicorn would be a Corvette C6 RS. KTEC 8.2 liter motor, 600 horsepower, 600 pound feet of torque, upgraded suspension, 
uh, full carbon fiber body, full Alcantara interior with actual seats that support you. And it is one of the best cars I've ever driven. My first pick would be 1995 Ferrari F355 Challenge. And the Challenge is the race version of the streetcar. However, the 1995 was also street legal. So you could take it to the track. It sounded amazing. You could drive it on the street and it was the last Ferrari race car to be offered with stick shift. My second pick would be the 911 GT2, the 996 generation, very rare, only 300 brought to the US, turbo, rear wheel drive and manual. My third pick uh, was a 991 GT3. I already have the Touring and you can get the earlier one for a little bit less. But since I already have that car and I love it, I'll pick a Ferrari 550 Marinello. You get the V12, it's front engine and it's manual and it's the last of its kind. After putting together Nardo, the last gated manual R8 ever made, I fell in love with that car. So I would look for any just pristine best example, manual V10, V8, doesn't matter, gated manual R8. I would buy the Porsche 991.2 Carrera T with a manual gearbox. I think these cars can be had maybe left over new or lightly used in probably the mid to high 90s and they are just beautiful cars. For a hundred grand, my original thought was a Cayman GT4. But I think I'm gonna go with the Mercedes E63 wagon. For a hundred grand, there's only one answer for me. And that would be a Lamborghini Yalpa. Mid-engine V8 gated manual Lamborghini, white on white interior with white wheels, hard top. That's all I need. This is actually a dream car of mine. So for $100,000, I would choose a fifth gen Dodge Viper. Ideally, it would be an ACR, but that's a little bit north of 100,000. So anything from a GT, GTC or GTS is perfectly fine. It has that V10 engine, it's a manual, so it's the proper transmission, and it's rewarding to drive both on the street and on the track. $100,000 is probably the most competitive price bracket on the entire car market. You can basically pick any car in the world and have 99% of them. But for me, I would pick a 2014 to 2018 Aston Martin Vanquish, just like the one you're seeing right here. Because it is, to me, one of, if not the most beautiful car ever made. Hey, so $100,000 budget, here's what I would get. My first supercar was a Ferrari 360 Spider. It was an F1. What would I get if I had 100 grand right now to spend? I would find myself a 360 gated car. I think it's a terrific car. It's still modern looking and gated. Not many of them left around and 100 grand will get you a fairly decent one nowadays. Hey guys, my three picks for $100,000 cars would be three really, really special cars in not just to me, but in automotive history. Number one, a 997.2 GT3. It's got that high revving Metzger motor, stick, only came in stick. And if you get a nice spec like yellow with carbon brakes and sports seats, that's a fun car to drive around and row through the gears all day. Second choice would be a 2008 to 2012 Aston Martin DBS. You could get these in a stick or an automatic, but the V12 and coupled to the design is just super timeless, old school Aston and just an amazing car all around. Last but not least would be a first generation Audi R8 V10 Plus with a gated manual. Gated manual being a number one, and I always tell people this is a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's effectively a Gallardo uh, LP560, uh, just a little bit more subdued, and if I dare say so, a little bit more comfortable. $100,000, it seems a pittance to pay for a car, but if I were to spend my dry cleaning money on a paltry manner of conveyance, it would have to be the Jensen Interceptor FF a natty British GT, and the first non-off-road car to have all-wheel drive and ABS in 1966. Huh. Not to mention a giant Chrysler V8. Bully! <laughs> whoa, 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 Mr. Fancy Pants. Slow your roll, because the best car for $100,000 has to be a legend. So we're gonna pick the BMW 2002 Turbo, BMW's first turbo car, 
the perfect three box car with flares and an air dam with things written backwards on the front and a spoiler and psh, turbo. What? You guys are so old. 400k, you don't want a British grandpa car or adolescent German nightmare. The car to have is a beautiful French rally car. He lost me with French, but he got me back with rally car. You have to buy the Alpine A110. Don't you mean Alpine? No, it's Alpine. It's French, you troglodyte. 1,200 pounds, 138 horsepower, rear engine, rear wheel drive, and they won the first World Rally Championship. How do you know so much about cars? My dad's a car historian. Jeez. Good show. Nice. Ha ha, Alpine. I'm a kid. Vinwicky, what's up guys? So this week I've heard that we have $100,000 to spend. Well, that's an easy choice for me because unlike everybody else who's gonna pick some high mileage Lamborghini or some totally flooded, devalued Ferrari or some falling apart Aston Martin, I'm gonna pick something that I can pull my toys with and that I can have a driver drive me around in the lap of luxury. I'm picking the 2016 Mercedes Sprinter. Now this is a long wheelbase Sprinter, fully customized, the quilted leather Mercedes seats, all of the embroidery, the Wi-Fi and streaming services, two TVs, We've got color changing LED light panels. I mean, I even got a fridge. I got a fridge and I got a wine bar. I would get the Audi R8 V10 manual transmission. I think for around $100,000, you know, in the 80s, 90s, this is one of the greatest entry-level cars you can get into the supercar world. The V10 makes a fantastic sound and their deadbolts reliable. So I think that's my choice. My first one, a 996 GT2, probably the most visceral and analog driving experience you can get in a modern supercar. Number two, first gen Lamborghini Gallardo. And of course, absolutely, positively, needs to have the gated manual. And number three, probably my favorite 911, which is the 964 Turbo. For a hundred grand, I would buy this thing and do what I'm about to do to it. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to give real world examples of hundred thousand dollar cars that Premier Financial Services has recently funded for drivers just like you. The first is a 97, Porsche 911 Turbo. A lot of fun. Uh, the second car is a 2010 Rolls-Royce Ghost. Just a tremendous amount of luxury and presence for $100,000. Uh, the third and my choice is the 1974 Jaguar E-Type V12. Just an iconic automobile from Jaguar. Um, tremendous presence and just a fun car to cruise around in. All right, $100,000 budget. I would buy a early GTR that has already been modified. For that kind of money, you could get like a 1300 wheel horsepower build. Now, if you want something a little less high strung, I think I would go with a 2014 Audi R8 with the newer S-Tronic transmission. Now, this is the same transmission that's in the Huracan. So huge improvement over that R-Tronic and a ton of car for the money. Hey guys, so for this week's $100,000 budget, I found this uh, beautiful Ferrari 348TB, uh, not even 50,000 kilometers on the clock. Uh, no service done at the point it should have been done. So this uh, allows you to pay this car for 50,000 euros. My choice of car for 100 grand? Quite easy, really. Ferrari Testarossa. I remember the first time I saw one, I thought it was an amazing car. I've always liked the, the thought of owning one. I think I'd take a white one, like in Miami Vice, get my pastel jacket on, take it out and go for a cruise. 
What an awesome price point. Thank you for all the great ideas. If you have better ideas, please let us know in the comments and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. We'll certainly enjoy it and we'll do another one next Friday. Thank you this month to Exotic Car Hacks for sponsoring this video and VinWiki Car Stories. We definitely appreciate their support and if you're in the market for your first exotic or you just want to make it a little bit more sustainable to buy, own, drive, and sell the exotic cars of your dreams, Exotic Car Hacks has compiled an educational resource that you can use to minimize your cost, maximize your opportunity, treat the cars as assets, leverage financing, and use all the advantages that they have accumulated to your advantage. So be sure to check them out. Use the link in the description below for their best deals since Black Friday, and I think it'll make it a whole lot easier for you to buy, own, drive, and eventually sell the car of your dreams.